The entire team at Emsolation want to acknowledge that we are gathered on the traditional lands of the Wurundjeri people. We want to recognise that we are recording and telling our stories on the stolen land of our country's first storytellers. We wish to pay our respects to all Wurundjeri elders and ancestors and to extend that respect to any First Nations peoples who listen to Emsolation. We recognise Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples' continued connection to the land and waters of this country and acknowledge that sovereignty was never ceded. Always was, always will be. Tim Rossiano. Hey, Andre, leave the wig on. Don't take it off. And Michael Lucas. In all of Barbara's legacy, which I consider often. This is Emsolation. The side of stage singers are hidden away like the hunchback of Notre Dame. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and hello to any of them that may be listening today. They know who they are. You're in Emsolation. Well, hello there and welcome to Emsolation. My name is Em Rossiano. I'm a writer, a singer, a stand-up comedian. Let me just stop, right? I'm going to do it in the speed I actually want to do it in. This is the speed it runs in my head. Are you ready? Well, hello there. My name is Em Rossiano. I'm a writer, a singer, a stand-up comedian, a maximalist power queen, a neurodivergent magic brain and a podcaster. And together with my best friend, Michael Lucas, since I was 11, I bring you this podcast every week. That's how fast I want to talk. Most of the time, but I slow it down. I slow it down. How are you? Look, I think I say this every week. I know. And if you're playing a drinking game for the amount of times I say the sentence I'm about to say, you would probably need to be in an emergency room somewhere. This week's app is chaotic. Record amount of side quests. I believe more side quests than actual main road meet happened. <laughs> it just... I don't know. When Michael walked in, we were both wild. Obviously, we are being mainly preoccupied with Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. But don't worry, we also talk about Beyonce, our hay fever, my daughter injuring herself on opening night, uh, my wallet turning up out of the blue from Las Vegas. We talk about Barbara Streisand and Andre Agassi having sex and argue over whether he revealed (laughs) Ben's doing a dance and he's distracting me and I was going to get there. Ben's, Ben's doing the... Back to Barbara Streisand asking Andre Agassi to take his wig off during sex. Britney Spears is doing the knife dance, which Ben was doing <laughs> in my peripheral. And anyone with ADHD you know if someone does something in their peripheral, it's over. Your thought pun- is gone. This intro is stuffed. Anyway, we do. It's, it's three hackers, even for us. So you have all that to look forward to. I also want to let you know that tomorrow, which is Friday, if you're listening on Thursday, Michael and I are doing a special edition of Emsolation around The Voice and the upcoming referendum. I also got to chat to Rachel Perkins, who is the co-chair of the Yes23 campaign, also an incredible filmmaker and producer with her company, Blackfella Films. She has been a long-time campaigner for this. She was a part of the Uluru Statement of the Heart. So I urge you to listen, especially if you're feeling unsure, We really got into how Indigenous Australia are feeling, which is something a lot of you have been wondering about as allies, because as we know, there are parts of First Nations communities that are voting no. And as allies, we want to listen to the voices of the First Nations peoples of this country. So we really dig into that. Michael and I give you our point of view and the way we'll be voting. So hopefully it's a resource for you to help educate yourself and where you are going to be standing come voting day, which is just over a week away. All right, that's it. Enjoy. Here we go. Play the music. Emsolators, you're only a what if away from creating the perfect holiday. And right now, Emsolation listeners can get 10% off selected hotels. Go to whatif.com forward slash listen for details. What if it's Aussie for travel? 
M. Rossiano and Michael Lucas. This is M. Salation. Michael Lucas, you're in, you're here. I received a frantic phone call from you on Monday. You were, you were, you were screaming. You were, yeah. you were, you were fapping. I really was. <laughs> I had dropped everything. Yeah. And was... also, as we know, I, if I receive phone calls from you. You think someone's dead? Something's wrong. Yeah. Because you know that I hate the phone. People only call me when they absolutely have to. And you said, I'm here, I'm calling you. I'm like, what's happened? And you said, Taylor's arrived. She's at the stadium in Brooklyn. And she is there with you, Jackman. And Blake Lively. And then I was like, and the actor that's married to her. Who's the actor that's married to her? Here's the superhero. I think I said something like that. And you had to explain her. Even now, Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. Also there with Sophie Turner in yeah. some kind of celebrity. I haven't seen her. Heartbreak Club. Yeah. It's the Heartbreak Club. Of course. Because you've got Hugh Jackman there and you and I were joking about Hugh Jackman maybe dating Sophie Turner like and Taylor was going to... To be fair, we also joked about him dating Ricky Martin, but let's move on. One we really hope happens and we Mm. won't say which one. Mm. And so the fact that they were there together, both nursing broken hearts, Mm. we assume. Yeah. And I, and and so I'm quickly gathering gathering my laptop up. We were here recording Emsolation Extra. But weren't you in like an open office space situation? <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you in pre-production for yeah, season three? Yes, I was, I was desperately writing. I'm on very, very hard deadlines. Oh, and I- side note. Congratulations, newsreader season three announced. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> By the way, we've known about season three since Michael left for England, but we couldn't oh, say absolutely. anything. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's all right. And I've then, been working on it uh, since, like, before we finished season two, so. Yeah, exactly. And then it got announced by people that weren't the ABC. Mm. Even Michael didn't announce it first. And I'm like, bitch, it's in the press. I oh, know. And you're like, yeah, but we've got to wait because we're going to do a whole thing. I'm like, I'm not waiting. I did not I wait. No. I, I totally busted out protocol. You have been very, very good. Very good. I'm, I have to say that the official dictum is we're still waiting. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know that I deserve any congratulations. <laughs> but anyway, thank you. So in about November when the ABC upfronts occur. Oh, who, who knows what might be announced? <laughs> who can say? Who can possibly predict? I don't know. <laughs> I did a whole thing. It was so great. And then I noticed like actors were suddenly reposting. Oh, they were happy about it. The actors were reposting the insulation post so they yeah. couldn't get in trouble. Yeah. Michelle, I was I loving know. it. I was like, yeah. It was great. So congratulations. Well, let's hope. Unless, unfortunately, they have to announce in November, unfortunately, the writer was unable to complete the series because <laughs> of his obsession with American football. <laughs> and back we go. So I was just beside myself. Mm. I'm like, how do I see this? I need to be inserting myself in. And mm. so I went and paid for I know. a, well, I got a seven-day free pass to some dodgy streaming service mm, mm. and the game was on my laptop I and know. I was watching. You outclassed me so quickly because I was sitting there pathetically doing Google image refreshes and saying things like, Anthony from Queer Eyes there. And then you're all like, bitch. I've already paid for the subscription. I'm watching it. I'm in. And so Michael's text, I am so disappointed at myself for how interested I am. Mm. I wrote back, I've just signed up for a week <laughs> trial on Dazen and I'm now streaming the game. Michael, that's a threshold I won't cross. I will not input my credit card details anywhere in an effort to follow the romance, but I feel reassured knowing you will. Well, I don't have to, do I? Because you'll send me everything. <laughs> I, re- I will cancel after the game. <laughs> did you? <laughs> yes. Okay, good. I did. Until I did. Next Sunday. <laughs> well, we don't know if she's going to go. So let's unpack. So, Chiefs versus the Jets. Okay. Not a West Side Story scenario. No. Actual football teams. Yeah. The Jets and the New York Jets. Now, the New York Jets got wind of the fact that Taylor Swift was going to be there. So they tried to bring their own celebrity along, didn't they? Yes. Not as impressive. He's the number one boy. He is to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's not. Oh, okay, yeah, no, it's fair. Kendall, Kendall. from Succession. Yes. Jeremy Strong, Strong mm-hmm. on the sidelines there. Mm-hmm, I mm-hmm. thought it was I thought it was odd. <laughs> <laughs> I did think it was odd. I just thought, why didn't she invite him up into the box? Because he's going for the other team. Mm, okay. Mm, mm, mm. So she's there in the box with all of her friends. And cranberry vodkas look like. Cranberry vodkas. Having time of her life. Donna was there. Travis's the mum, mum. Of course. Well, she arrived... Partway through, didn't she? Because she had the other son playing too or something like that. Is that right? No, the other son wasn't playing oh, okay. there. She wasn't with Taylor the whole time though. Oh. No. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I can't understand. I'm so obsessed. Like I think about it so much. Mm. And there's one particular bit of footage where he looks up at her that's doing the rounds where he kind of has this goofy smile on his face. Mm. And there was also a moment during this game where she leant over to Blake Lively and said, Look at him mm. in this thirsty. They've hired all the royal lip readers, they obviously. Are. I mean, yep. yeah. I mean, the lip readers again, they're getting the call. Thank God, because every week now of this season, any time that she's there, they're going to have to hire the lip readers to tell us exactly what to They do. really will. I'm surprised that you haven't got one on staff. <laughs> Good investment. This <laughs> is delivering everything that you want from basically royalty. No, it's they better, are the new and American. we don't have to feel conflicted about them being in the constitution because they're not. We can just gossip about them. They're the new American royal family. They really are. That that box, it, the people in that box, yeah, royal family. Oh, great! And we got an Aussie in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's the closest an Australian's got to head of state. I totally think that this is that this is the new dynasty. Yeah, like I genuinely believe that. So the game wasn't it wasn't a good game. No. Okay, so the Chiefs were expected to trounce the Jets, and they did not. The Jets nearly won, mm, and I was good. I was worried that she was going to be considered a jinx. Well, I certainly hope he hadn't done anything to make him in less than peak form going into the game. Well, he was spotted leaving her house hours before the game. Mm. and some may argue his mind may not have been on the game and there was a lot of distraction. Mm. And there was a lot of people on Twitter slash X annoyed that every time the Chiefs scored, they would flash to Taylor, even though he wasn't scoring, instead of showing the player celebrating or the player's family or even a Chiefs fan, they would go up to the box straight away. Like straight up to the box. Well, totally get it, but also, <laughs> come on, they, the rating surge, they knew what they 63%. had to Sixty-three percent is the most watched NFL game since the Super Bowl. <laughs> Can you... I was sitting in a little studio in Australia, in Melbourne, in Northgate, streaming it on my busted up mm. Apple MacBook Pro. Mm. I'm part of that ratings increase. You really are. 63% increase. Yeah. It's wild. It's wild. It's wild. It's also wild because I remember around the time of the 1989 album thinking she is, this is her imperial era. She, no one can get more famous than this. She is a hit machine. Everyone's obsessed with her love life. It's just it doesn't get any... And, but I can't believe, little did I know, mm. that approximately 10 years later mm -hmm. I would be desperately scrolling through feeds looking at football NFL. Concerts. Yeah. We are into football concerts. I'm not. I'm really not. But oh, I I'm into... So I watched the Kelsey documentary yep. as discussed yep. with Marcella about the brothers and, mm. and all their life. And now I, I do wish to make a redaction. Is that a word? Okay. Redact. Yeah, you want some to redact something? I sure. made. I insinuated that Taylor wasn't really into sport. Okay. I was incorrect. Turns out her and her family are massive Philadelphia Eagles fans. Okay. Now Philadelphia Eagles are the team that his bro uh, Travis's brother Jason plays for. Oh, okay? okay. And apparently around the time of the Super Bowl and the Eagles lost, Taylor was actually on stage somewhere and was very upset and devastated. Mm -hmm. A massive fan. Now, the Philadelphia Eagles hate everyone. They're, they're known intense. I was watching the documentary. They're really intense about their team and hate everyone else. But Travis has been given an exception and a pass because he is Jason's brother who plays for the Philadelphia Eagles, mm, right? Right, right, right. So it's totally cool. So the Eagles are sanctioning this relationship of one of their most famous fans with their prime rivals who they lost the Super Bowl to. Right. So it's even been given the blessing by the most stringent, ardent fans. But what I want to say is telling you exactly fucking who Travis Kelsey was. Yeah, right. She didn't okay. need to do no Google image searching. She didn't need a cheat sheet written by a staff so, member. This is the thing. The cheat sheet. Again, makes me think that was deliberate because that bitch knows all about NFL. If yeah. she follows the Eagles, they've won the Super Bowl, she knows all the teams, she knows the Kelseys, she doesn't need a cheat sheet. Oh, the prosecution She rests. doesn't need a cheat sheet. So I wish to redact my comments or re, re, what am I, retract, not redact, retract my comments insinuating that Taylor is not a sporty sport McSportison because she does do yeah, sport. yeah. Now she does sport. She does. She does. I am going to write some Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey fan fiction for next week. Okay, great. Who do you want to play the role of? Fuck. Uh, Sophie Turner, can I? Well, she'd be in it. <laughs> you can be Hugh. Because she'd, be she'd have an accent, wouldn't she? Yeah. She's yeah. British, so yeah. you can do all the accents. You can do Hugh. Hugh okay. And you can do Sophie. Yeah. Um, Anthony from Queer Eye, I feel I'm very well placed to do if he comes in. Well, he's Canadian. 
Okay. He, he's French Canadian. A yeah. boot. Okay. Okay. You can do all the accents. I'll do all this. I'm going to make everyone Southern who's American, even though they're not Southern. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. I can't wait. Brittany, you'll just wander on in. Or maybe it's Malin. Wait. Uh, oh, okay. The knife dancing. Yeah. That Police meme. called. The memes. Am I allowed? Okay, 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 okay. Am I allowed to enjoy the memes or is it concerning? You tell me. Because she has said she's fine. Like there it was, was a, a tribute, welfare- she said. A tribute to Shakira. Yep. I mean, sure. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, guys, the knives were fake. The knives were fake. They weren't even real. I got them from a prop shop. Right. But then when you she chinged them together, they were very clearly not fake. Right, yeah. Like, they made the sound teppanyaki chefs make when they're right. preparing the meals. You know, <laughs> they're not fake. But and the, I hope there's a teppanyaki. If there's a teppanyaki <laughs> chef out there who's going to recreate that, then get me a reservation. <laughs> But the, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but the knife dancing, I live. I watch the knife dancing every day. Mm, mm, mm. And there's a new meme. There's there's some memes now that are just, oh, my God, they're so good. They've inserted, Give me the best one. They've inserted her into a fight scene from, I think it was Mission Impossible, <laughs> and she's just bending off the bullets and spinning in the air like she does with this. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just ching, 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 like that is amazing. <laughs> and there's one where she's bringing a plane into land. Oh, wow. <laughs> Not since Nicole Kidman seal clap has there been something better to meme. It's the most iconic meme of 2023. Wow. Won't be beaten. No, no. I, how can you beat interpretive stabby yeah, dancing? you can't. As Tell you what, it's better than that bullshit picture of the man who's turning around on his girlfriend looking at the other man that I'm so sick of seeing. That's oh, still been yeah, no. For years. Britney's knife dancing. And you'd be amazed. It can be applied to so many niche scenarios. <laughs> We're going to be here in a decade's time. <laughs> ching, 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 ching. Yep. But the other thing is, on Marcella's 22nd birthday, we are getting the autobiography. Like, it's I, official. I really thought you were about to say, we are reenacting. No, well, we <laughs> Just waiting for the birthday party. I'll, I'll come out at the live show in <laughs> December and I'll come out and I'll recreate the knife dancing in the undies with that. But ching, 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 yeah, ching, ching. I would watch. <laughs> I want that. You know that some gays said that now. have learnt the, chore- the oh, choreography. I'd be to disappointed. The absolute. They had it. You don't understand. Mm. People are redoing the knife dance. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Has Brittany ever been together with an American football player? Feels like she should have. No, she only dates the help. <sighs> <laughs> the backing dancer, the cleaner, the personal trainer. She only dates people okay. she's done a background yeah. employment check on. All right, sure. Not a criminal a trainer, background check. A trainer she'd do, wouldn't she? She does. Yeah, but she, that's the help, yeah. Okay. Sam was her trainer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's an actor slash personal mm. trainer. Uh, so her autobiography is coming out. She's confirmed. Okay, guys, so my book, The Woman and Me, is coming out October 24th. I'm doing the finished touches on it right now, and I hope you guys like it. It's coming soon. I just imagine her at night, like, just scribbling new things. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure the knife dance will be an addendum. I can't wait. So no, that right. is, we have so much to look forward to. Anyway. Right. Anyway. I had something else to say about Taylor because it brought Tell back me. a memory. Okay. There's a particular frenzy for me when... A female from the entertainment sphere starts dating someone from sport. And I realise it is because it's because of the unique thing of they can be giving reactions, which is so good. I mean, obviously in Australia, we our national legacy is Beck and Leighton. <laughs> but also also Delta and Mark, Mark Philippoussis. Philippoussis. But I saw a list and I had forgotten the greatest of all time is not Taylor. I mean, she'll get there maybe with Travis. The greatest of all time, without Ooh. question... Do you remember, and I've forgotten. Andre Agassi. And Barbara. And Barbara Streisand. Streisand. Do you remember? How did I? Did you remember her, like, going to Wimbledon? Yes. Neither confirming or denying that, but also I remember she was wearing all these sort of layers and she would take them off and sun herself as she watched him. And I think he was a solid at least a decade her junior, which only made it all the more sizzling and she really knew there was no sort of chatting with girlfriends with her she was there it was like she had her own row and she was like the queen watching and that was a real moment in time and I'd forgotten in all of Barbara's legacy which I consider often Hi, gay. I had not remembered the Andre Agassi affair. He wrote about it in the book mm. and it wasn't much he mm. didn't give us much no. the other revelation. Her that... book's coming out it's over a thousand pages. Oh my god thank god <laughs> what I do remember being shocked at was that he wore 
wore a wig on court. Yes. Oh, he wore a mullet. I'm sweaty. Yeah. And I, I would have been worried about it flying off at any given moment because mm. I don't think Andre's using wig glue. No. I feel like he's just putting it on with the 80s sweatband. Yeah. At any moment, it could have flown off. Yeah. He concentrated on your game, worrying about your wig, your hair going off. I don't know. And did did Barbara help him put the wig on pre games? I think. Do you think they when they had sex? Do you think she made him wear the wig? She's very do concerned Barbara with Barbara telling Andre to keep the wig on while they're intimate? <laughs> oh my god! I can't do a voice. It's too. It's very. It's hard. It's that you do it very well. I'm from New Jersey. Hey, that, hey that's J Lo. Hey, I'm just a girl You're from like New butter. York. You're like butter. You're like butter. Hey, um, Andre, leave the is... wig on. <laughs> Don't take it off. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, Andre. Keep the hair that on. Is, what the? <laughs> hell? That was very good. That was... I think what you're trying to say is, wait, wait, wait. Okay, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> okay, Andre. <laughs> no, how does she speak? She's much more clear. She's. This was in her later, like ethereal era. This was in the era when she was saying some things like, do we really need a natural disaster to remind us that we're no, all just... No, you're not doing enough New York in okay. there because she's just a goil from New York. <laughs> I'm getting her voice up. Wait a minute. Um, Barbara Strassand voice. Strassand. Strassand. Not a Z. Sand. Strassand. Strassand. <laughs> Barbara Strassand into. Okay. I think she might have been an early oh, pioneer my, for hair extensions. This Google search is my new record for how, how did Google interpret <laughs> Ba bra bra Swaziland. Swaziland. This is my worst Google search ever. Okay, here we go, here we go. Here we go. You ready? We're going to get her voice. You invite me as a guest on your show and, and, and you liked, we, we would talk about all kinds of subjects. That's a hot that interview. What's happening here? Right? So you were using you in, me as a guest on your show to talk. You were, to talk. You you were using me as a guest on your show to talk. Wow. Have you what never watched this interview? 60 minutes. I'll send it to you. Oh, my so, God. So you were, Andre. She does. It's like, mm, okay. Andre, leave the wig on. <laughs> <laughs> it's much better that way, darling. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, I'm glad we got this out. Why are we? But because I was talking about um, entertainers and sportsmen. Oh, right. Mm, they're, so, they're my favourite couple. So I'm really hoping that this relationship goes the distance. My only concern is that the, it, it'll just get too hot for both of them. They've got such big oh, profile careers on. and his career really depends on a lot of good headspace and good luck and yeah. being up for games and focus. And I think if he loses any sort of form in any way, she'll be blamed. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. So I just think I hope, I just, I hope I love them, but I just feel like now everyone just needs to calm the fuck down. All of us need to chill out. Once I was going to say, I'm glad you took your own advice then because I'm like, I don't think you should be lecturing anyone about calming just, the fuck down. Just guys, no one spread more excitement about this than you. I just have a collective... Chill message. Yeah. Okay, right. everyone, just fucking chill. Just zip it, just lock it up, just chill. Just breathe through it. We don't want to ruin it. I have got a T-shirt on the way that <laughs> yeah. does celebrate their relationship, but it's classy. It's meta. You can barely tell. It's just got a picture of Travis Kelsey, the Eras Tour, underneath it. Like, you'll never know. Do you know, I, the person that I want to know, everyone's talking about the profits that the um, Football League's making from it. What I want to know is who has the license to his dating show? Because that has been sitting on a shelf gathering dust and... What was oh, it called? Oh, I don't know. He dated 50 women. I don't know. Yeah. But uh, tell me. I it's mean, we, get a we'd watch it. We'd watch it. Oh. I'd binge it. 100%. We wait, we hope, we wish them well. Will I be... I did cancel my subscription to watching the games. I'm only going to watch the games that line up with her tour. So she does have the rest of October off. Oh, well, no. Okay. But at least then... She'll go away again until she'll come to Australia. When's the Super Bowl? Not till next year. The Super Bowl is in February. Whoa. Yeah. Well, she'll be in Australia then. What? She will be. Oh, God. Oh, God. It's too much. Too much. Okay, what if right. he came here? To, oh, God. Like, what if he's not he's in the Super out. Bowl? <gasps> he could be here. He could come here. He could come and visit. He could be in Australia. He could be in Melbourne. He That's could be right. in her Melbourne show. We could be breathing the same air as the two of them together. We don't they have tickets. Don't worry about that. <laughs> I know people. That's oddly terrifying. <laughs> I'll get us tickets. Okay. Don't worry. You know who's touring it? Frontier. Frontier. Touring. Yeah. You know who tours me? Frontier Touring. Correct.
Jem, my my EA and production manager, is just listening, going, "There's no fucking way, bitch." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like your confidence. <laughs> What else were we going to talk about? <laughs> um, several things. You said you said Chella's knee. You said Beyonce releasing oh, the yeah. clip of the thing. You, we... So yesterday I received another frenzied text message from my best friend that you send me. No, did I tell you? Who told her? Oh, no, that? it was from me. I'm really, you know what it is? It's because I'm all I'm doing at the moment is desperately writing, so I'm always on my laptop. <laughs> And so at this stage, there's no way you're going to beat me with news. No, you because got me. I, I, you know, I do need to I have a little... I got in first saying it was coming. I said it was coming on December 1st. I texted you the true, other night, remember? True, But you got the, the actual trailer. trailer to me first. Mm. When I am performing, I am nothing but free. <laughs> Is it recording? The goal for this tour was to create a place where everyone is free and no one is judged. You need me. Stand by for prop lift down. Dark brown, dark skin, light skin, baby. Start over, start fresh, create the new. That's what the Renaissance is about. You and were I, driving? I was driving. Yeah. So I had to do, hey, Siri, text Michael Lucas. Oh, I know. <laughs> Are you going to read the yeah. text message? <laughs> Good luck, bitch. Got to go back through 50 essays about morning wars. Oh, so many. So oh many. Oh, God. Oh, okay, ready? Okay, 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 okay. Hey, you know what I've been... <laughs> do you know what I've been watching? The 90s supermodel documentary. Me too. It wasn't about the fashion. It was about the women. That's what a supermodel is. I've started dressing yeah. like them. Look, do you see? I'm you in look my 90s. just like them. Think Linda, Linda Evangelista, right? That's what yeah, you were thinking. That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> your, your response to the Beyonce trailer was, oh, my God, oh, my God, if you'd like to me, it's too much. It's too much. I'm crying. I'm screaming. I'm coughing. I'm dying. I'm also driving. <laughs> this is a voice to text. I hope everything comes out the way it's intended. I think you meant, if you, did you mean if you lie to me? No. What did that mean? I oh my god! Know. If you like to me, it's too much. Oh my god! I don't even know. Okay, <laughs> you should have seen me trying to get the voice to text message out to you because it was just like. <laughs> so we have to do. We have to dress in silver again, and we have to do a viewing. Mm. A cinema chain has reached out to me, <gasps> and so we're looking into this a possible viewing dressed up. It, okay, I'm, I'm maybe just me and you in the cinema by ourselves. I don't know if people will be able to handle what is okay. Okay. Question, mm. what is the correct etiquette for watching the Renaissance movie in a movie theatre? Because when you go to a movie, generally you're expected to sit there quietly. Oh, no. What is the etiquette for, and protocol for watching this documentary in the cinema? Can we get up and dance? Yes. <laughs> of course you can. But wouldn't that annoy people who I want get, to I, I guess I don't quite know yet, like, what's the ratio of, like, doco to performance like is it similar to homecoming or is it more like in bed with madonna because they're I think very different it's similar to homecoming because she has hinted that the visuals are within mm. so i feel like we'll get each song it's feature length enough time to play each song from renaissance in full so can we dance and sing in the, th in yes. the cinema I'm so excited. Of course we can. Because I feel like maybe we'll recapture just a, a percentile and, yeah. of the feeling of the euphoria we had. I watch it nightly on YouTube. I pick a different show and watch a different bit of it. I'm not so kidding. Good. I'm just constantly hankering. And the and in that trailer, she says something like, I wanted to create something so that people can just hold on to it so that then they can go forward in their life and go back. I'm, I'm there. I mean, look, I think she was speaking about people that are really dealing with a lot of complicated things in their lives and... And and I, I I don't know that I I don't know that she was imagining me sitting there at my standing desk going on oh, recapture, but I am. So the Beyonce trailer is out. Mm. The film's coming out on December the first. I'm working on a viewing for us. Okay. Okay. Good to know. All right. It's insulation extra.
Haven't subscribed to Emsolation Extra yet? Here's what you've missed out on this week. I know that a lot of you love it when we do ADHD chat here at Emsolation. So today you are getting a very hefty helping of it, a delicious serving. It's all ADHD. It's two chaotic ADHD women just speaking their own language at their own frequency. You do not have your podcast turned to 1.5 today. No, ma'am, no, sir, no, gentle they. It's just us talking at our normal level. Who is us? I speak of award-winning social media reporter and presenter for Guardian Australia, the wonderful Matilda Bosley. Odette, my middle daughter who has an attentive ADHD, her one job is to feed the dogs and it's been her job since she was Mm. six years old. She has never, and she's 16 now, ever remembered to do it once. Yeah. She has to be reminded and... I get it, but her her dad has, has been so, why can't and it was about he had to acknowledge that to her and say okay now I get it and that's really hard to do because it's the hardest thing as a parent it's the hardest thing you ne- you never want to be like oh th- this is partially to do with me and I think that's yeah that's another thing of it, reframing the way you think about mental conditions in general but you know neurodevelopmental conditions but because like if you think about it you know when I was talking to my grandparents about it there's a lot of worry and you know people within my family were worried about the medication and worried about getting this diagnosis because you have to remember back when they were kids you could get shipped off to an asylum yeah genuinely which is a horrific like there was a it, it was a danger to your life mm-hmm. to be diagnosed mm. with anything. Mm. And obviously that has changed so much and we're doing so much work to be like, this diagnosis is amazing. Yeah. It is the most wonderful thing. It is not, you know, this burden or this stigma which we uh, were asked about at the Senate all Inquiry. The yeah. For all of that and so much more, subscribe now at msolation.supercast.com. It's Emsolation Extra. Gang, if you enjoyed listening to Michael and my Hecker's Holiday, I'm here to tell you that you and your bestie are only a what if away from having your own adventure right here on home soil. Aussies love any excuse to get away from it all. And with 23 years of connecting us and exploring this country, what if knows Aussies best? Plus, what if is more than just hotels? Maybe you'd prefer an apartment or a gorgeous little cabin or even a holiday park. You can also book flights, car hire and other things to do. Plus, you can book with confidence now and convince your bestie it's a great idea later. Booking cancellation windows apply. Do all of that and more on the go. Book on the What If app now. You're only a What If away from the perfect holiday with What If. It's Aussie for travel. M. Rossiano and Michael Lucas. This is M. Salation. Feel good news story of the week. As people will recall, speaking of Beyonce, I if you followed our adventures, I lost my wallet at the Las Vegas, Nevada mm. airport. I left it. I was so happy and enamoured with my amazing hat mm. that I purchased at the airport. For good reason. <laughs> I was walking around. I became a different person. Yeah. It's like when Scott puts on his flat peak hell yeah cap, he just becomes a complete fucking middle-aged doofus dickhead. Okay. Scott has a cap. That when he puts it on, something happens to him. Really? It's really. It says, hell yeah. Hell yeah. And it's a flat peak. Like he's a 50 year old guy with a flat peak cap on. Right. How really did sad. he. Nothing says me like this is more than that Ford Mustang update and the flat peak. Wow. So someone gave it to him. Mm. And every time he puts it on, the girls and I are like, oh God, oh God, he comes, Who, hell yeah. And so what? He just sort of drifts closer to. Just dickhead them. Even more so. Flies right at the sun. He's Icarus. Which okay. is a fucking annoying Icarus. And so I found when I put this hat on, I became a whole different person too. Like I felt a bit of compassion for my husband and his hell yeah cap. Yeah. Oh, you were wandering out the gate going, yes, I'm here. <laughs> I know you're all looking at me. Do you like my hat? Look at my hat. Check out my hat. Yeah, I know. I did that to everyone. Yeah. And Not doing- quietly as well. I just want to point out. She no. was saying this absolutely audibly. <laughs> To the entire I was going to have a swapping people. What oh. do you think of my hat? With no microphone. What do you think of my hat? <laughs> <laughs> I already know the answer, but I want to hear you say it. <laughs> right, amazing. And so in all of this, I took my wallet out, left it on the seat, got on the plane. Mm. And then I realised when we arrived, we've talked about this, at the car hire place, gone. Mm. Little did I know, Adrian also lost his CPAC machine on Which the same expensive. flight. Yeah. Very Something expensive. Something that happened. <laughs> 
like, so we both, at the behest of you, by the way, because I was not going to carry follow through on this. You're like, just put in a, a report. Mm. It's like, Ugh. I'll be honest with you. I even when I said it, I thought the chances are at best ten percent. I mean, still worth it. But... I can't believe I did it. So not off brand. It I is know. so off brand for me to do that, but I, I did know. it. Then lo and behold, I get an email last week. We found your lost item. Unbelievable. And it's been and they they stopped looking at the forty five day mark. Mm. So we're at about day twenty five. I was like, oh, my God. And they're like, we'll send it to you. I was like, and I still didn't believe it. I'm like, okay, cool. So I'll send it to me. So I paid him 80 bucks. And then yesterday in the mail, my red Gucci wallet arrived, all the cards still in it, even more miraculously, my Gucci hair clip that I'd mm. taken out of my hair. And that was the real source of your yeah. what you were sad about. Yeah, and because it didn't fit under my hat. So I had to take the hair clip out. <laughs> the hat has a lot to answer for. <laughs> fucking hat. And this mm. clip was a sentimental value. I loved it. It was very expensive. It was a gift to myself around podcast time, winning awards. It was all very tied up with things. The clip was inside the wallet. Still there. What a reveal. You had cancelled all your credit cards and replaced your licence and everything like that. But, you know, no Doesn't harm, matter. no foul. Yeah. Got the wallet, got the clip, restored my faith in humanity. And Absolutely. I think this has something to do with Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. Okay. I just think the world's healing. I just think people are generally happier. Okay. And someone's seen this and gone, I'm going to send this bitch as well back to Australia. Do you know how many people had to put themselves out? I know. You know, like, it's really impressive. I, look, they both must have been found pretty much instantly and then it was an administrative backlog, I reckon. Because Adrian got his CPAP machine At the exact back same time. At the same time. Yeah, yeah. I reckon there was some poor person who was, like, working through all of the things going, what, do we have anything about this? And then finding it. Amazing. So all's well that ends well. I'm so impressed. I know. And you know what? It was a slight, like, a, a, it slightly, very slightly besmirched the Beyonce experience that you'd both had those losses beforehand. But now that's gone. In fact, if anything, it's just to add further luster well, it to arrived, an already amazing memory. But it arrived the day the, the trailer, trailer came. What's so, that? I mean, what is that? People say she's not a deity. <laughs> not us. <laughs> now. God, we are going everywhere. I truly don't know where we're going now. So many topics were listed. My daughter. Oh. I want to pay homage to a true Australian hero. Move on. Okay. Because she, don't you laugh? No, I'm not. She has been going through it. Yep. She was cast in Heather's The Musical, mm. Ockpax production. They're a very well-respected mm. amateur theatre, but they're top of the top. Yeah, very high standard, Stop as Em kept high telling standard. me. Very high standard. And also, standard. let's keep in mind, when it comes to singers... Singers. She is mm-hmm. someone who has high standards. I do. I only listen to singers. Singers. Very rarely listen to people who Can't cannot sing. sing. We were just speaking about it, and I wasn't going to mention it, but... <laughs> my range has improved. <laughs> because of estrogen. Now, let me tell you what our theory is. Zeke and I have talked we, about this. We discussed this and then it just led to the firmest, we absolutely will just not discuss this on the podcast. I've discovered I can sing higher because, and here's why, this is, this is our scientific, not based, no research, nothing theory, why mm-hmm. I have a higher range. Mm-hmm. Estrogen acts as a natural anti-inflammatory mm. and uh, you're able to sing better if your larynx isn't all like mm. swollen up with shit mm. around it. My nose keeps leaking. I'm having terrible hay fever. It's such a hay fever season. Like, it started so early. Oh, me too. My hay fever's off its fucking riveting for people. I know. Oh, my God. I feel like I'm going to die from hay fever. I was having such a bad attack of it in Sydney when I was seeing a show, and it was one of those times I had to wait for laughs to blow my nose constantly. I feel like I'm going to have to start shelving the tell... Told her, what's it called? They made me so tired. Oh, Zyrtec just, is what I take. Zyrtec, just, just snort it. I have point. to take it at night. It's just too tiring in the day. <laughs> wow, we're so old. <laughs> what was I talking this about? This is a riveting oh. part of the week. Oh, so yeah. my voice is, oh my God. How do you know it's not the hay fever? We are going to be editing this I fucking know. thing until midnight. <laughs> I knew it was going to be wild when I got here today. So, oh yeah, so... All the information's gone around my voice box. And so I'm just singing freer because wow. the estrogen is a natural anti inflammatory. I've been so low on it for so long yeah. that it's been choking my voice up. This is our theory. Okay. Whatever the reason is, I've got a higher range now. She's got the range. She's wow. a singer. And wow. <laughs> Will you be showcasing this range at the, the cancellation end of year? End of year. Yes. Get your tickets. Oh my Get God. Get your tickets. Stop. Hear her to- like you've never heard her. Before. We have to get back on track. This train. Marcella. <laughs> yeah, go on. She's an Australian hero. Can That's we, what we're up can to. We just, can we just 
trade gap. We've had Barbra Streisand and Andre Agassi having sex. <laughs> Putting the wig on. <laughs> We've had our hay fever. We've had CPAC machines. We've had Taylor Swift. Oh, God. So... She was casting this thing in like January, February. They've been rehearsing three days a week. She taught that she did all the choreography. She worked her ass off. Like I was so proud of her. I knew the dance moves because she was working so hard at it. Mm, and she, like, part of the reason she was not with us at Beyonce was her commitment to the to rehearsal this production. process. Yeah. Yes. And so she was so excited. And opening night was two weeks ago. I went along with my parents and Odette. And the the Heather's the musical. It's bonkers. Michael went and saw it closing night. We'll get to that. And so I'm there and it's great. It's it's a great standard. Marcella's out first on stage after the initial kind of intro. She's dance captaining. She's making everyone laugh. Strong mover. She was, no, she was really good. But also <laughs> she was in front all the time because she's a little shorty. But she was doing a lot of comedic stuff with her face. And yeah. Odin and I like, oh, she's great. She's so mm. great. And then there's a moment where she gets lifted up. And she comes down from the lift and I notice something because I only watch cello when there's a stage on it and she's not. Fair enough. (laughs) And I looked and I'm like, oh. And then I watch her kind of wander off stage and I'm like, oh, no. And my stomach's hurting. But I'm like, no, 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 it's fine, it's fine. Maybe she just landed weirdly. And then that's 20 minutes into the show. Then she's just gone. My child does not reappear on the stage. And I'm sitting there with my parents and Odie, I'm going... Where's Chella? What's what's going on? So I'm trying to text Chella in a theatre like, are you okay, are you okay? And um, I get nothing back. And so I ch- at, at, finally at interval I charge out and i knocking on the door oh, to be let backstage yeah. and they're like, you can't come back here. I said, my daughter is oh, injured. You were Shirley MacLaine in terms of endearment. Yes. Less severe than that. I also was like an a current affair reporter. I put my foot oh, in the door. Of course. Foot in the door journalism, foot yeah. in the door parenting. And I busted in and my beautiful, she's sitting there on the chair sobbing. Oh. Now, Marcella never cries. I've seen her cry mm. three times in her whole life. Mm. She's stoic as fuck like her father. And she's crying. And so I started crying. Then Jenny, the original Terminator. She was there too. Busts in. Oh, my God. Opens up her bag. What medication do you need? My mum carries around a chemist warehouse (laughs) in her bag. (laughs) Is it restricted to that? I would imagine she's like, what do you need? And a trip to Ketamine? Heroin? I got it all. (laughs) <laughs> Jenny is legendary for her bag of drugs, right? So she's like, she's like, peddler, she's opening it up and it's like literally you should see in there. It was like, God, I'm just also mental note, remember to contact mum when I need anything Mm-mm. for a good time. <laughs> or just to improve your age. <laughs> <laughs> so Jella's sitting there crying and we're like, what can we do? She's like, nothing, it's nothing, it's nothing. And then they say to her, oh, there's an option to sing side of stage. <gasps> so sad. So sad. I mean... <laughs> the side of stage singers are hidden away like the hunchback of Notre Dame. Like, <laughs> like their side of stage. Hello to, like, to any of them that may be listening today. They know who they are. Okay. There's no, if your cast is, like you can't be on stage seen or really heard because your mics will be turned down to one. Mm. Do you still want to do it? Mm. And bless these kids. Mm. Bless them, they did. But Chella's like, <laughs> no, <laughs> I do not. So then she had to come and watch the rest of the show oh, with me. In the audience. In the audience, quietly sobbing delicate tears and then... But what? could you explain what had happened? Did she know what had happened? She did her ACL again. Same okay. knee injury. Is that your something crucial ligament? She's Yeah, she's out. She missed all eight shows. When did she last do it? Nepal, about six months ago. Oh. Due for surgery in November. Oh. Now doesn't know if she can have the surgery because it's all inflamed again. Oh. But she had to, she missed every show. She got 20 minutes into opening night. She'd rehearsed for seven months. Wow. Her whole life had been revolving around this and dedicated to mm. it. Missed seeing Beyonce with us mm. and didn't get to do the run. It was, I can't tell you, I did parenting this, this situation. Plus she's nearly 22, right? So she's an adult. Mm. And, but then in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, good, hardship. Because this child has had no hardship. Oh, okay. This child okay. has yeah, once right. yelled at okay. me, you yeah. loved me too much for me to achieve anything. Yeah, I thought you were about to say, good, she can't leave the house. <laughs> <laughs> I know there would have been a little part of nah, you that saw that. we've crossed that. She needs to leave the house. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> no, <just>, I'm worried. <laughs> You've made it too comfortable for her. Actually, yes, but I'm like, this might give her a bit of eye of the tiger. You know, this might okay. be she's got something bit, to prove. Yeah, something to dig in on when, when she's feeling like she wants to achieve something. If she gets through this, yeah. 
So I took her to closing night, which you attended. I did attend, yeah. Very generous well, of you. Oh Well, no, it was a good show. But still generous, you agreed to come to an amateur theatre production of Heather's. Specifically and, to see Cella. And she wasn't in it. Yeah. But she sat next to us and again quietly sobbed. I'm glad you were between us because I think I would have felt, I think it would probably would have impacted my <laughs> viewing experience <laughs> to be sitting next to someone but sobbing in pain. It's a wild show. The, the second it's a wild show. opens with I It was a wild it. movie. Yeah. I've forgotten. Yes. Did, why did we think we needed the musical version of it's, that movie? It is intriguing. Mm. And I would say it's the movie very clearly written before the era of the Columbine Massacre, basically. Yeah. And so there is something about a guy wandering around in all black and a black coat declaring he's going to kill all the students that's a little bit, <laughs> okay, and now he's bursting into song. Yeah, and also the second half opens with the song called I Love My Dead Gay Son. I love my dead gay son. Yes. That was odd. <laughs> but I feel like it was sort of, like it clearly sort of came in the wake of Book of Mormon when, yeah. you know, maybe like they were going for that so wrong it's right sort oh, of vibe. Oh, that whole vibe was very much yes. there. But it was a great production. I enjoyed it. Oh, the standard of performers was amazing. Singers. Singers. But my daughter was not there on stage with them. She would, well. And she elected to not go to the after maybe party. Maybe it's for the best because then she would have just set the standards so high. <laughs> she opted to not go to the after party. Anyway, for those of you, I know a lot of M Slaters did actually actually buy tickets and oh. were wondering where she was. That's oh. where she was, very badly injured, at home, very sad, with me just wandering past her room trying to feed her and cheer her up and just annoying her so much. I yeah. just annoyed her. I think she just needed to be left to My dad watch. left. I want everyone to know. My dad left at half time after Chella had done her niece. No point, he said. <laughs> no That's point. That's spirit. He's so one-eyed. Chella was understudy to the lead and yeah. the girl who sung the lead was amazing. But mm. he just did announce very loudly, Chella's a better singer. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, Vincy, uh, yep, her family and friends are... And she was incredible. They were both incredible. Yeah. Like, you can't compare. Two different singers. But my dad just, like, and then just, oh, well, Chella's injured. And he said, oh, we're going. I'm like, can you stay? He's like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Go golf. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think that's enough for us. Oh, yeah. We'll be back tomorrow to talk about The Voice. We will. Uh, Rachel Perkins. Slight gear change. Definite but needed. I know a lot of people are still kind of confused and don't really know which way to vote and sometimes weirdly look to us for information, which is worrying but also it is worrying. Honor. So we are tomorrow, you'll be hearing, um, I chatted with Rachel Perkins, who is the co-chair of the Yes23 campaign, also an incredible filmmaker, incredible. Blackfella Films. Oh. Um, so Her driven. Producer, amazing. Yeah, she's an amazing woman. Like It was an honour. Yeah. And Michael and I will be talking it through, letting you know how we're voting and why. And I just want to remind everyone, you know, we're not going to tell you how to vote. We're going to tell you how we're voting and we're going to try to explain things to you. But ultimately is a decision you have to make. So I want to remind everyone of that. All right. Well, we have to go off now and try and edit that absolute <laughs> fucking schmuzzle. I'm out of here. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> this is insulation. All right, gang, that's it. That's all we have time for. It was a hot mess. But in there, you felt our passion for Taylor, for Beyonce, for Britney and her knives. Oh, God, Britney and her knives. I want to remind you that tomorrow we have an extra edition of Emsolation, regular. Everyone can access it. It's free. It'll be on our regular channel where Michael and I discuss The Voice, the upcoming referendum, and you'll hear my chat with Rachel Perkins, the co-chair of the Yes23 campaign. So hopefully that'll be helpful to you and enable you to make a decision either way. Also, December 3, M Salation Live, the end of year extravaganza happening, M More Theatre in Sydney. Love to see you there. Tickets are selling well. We're at about 70% sold now, which is fantastic. It's a great night out. You can come on your own. There's going to be... What's happening? What's going to happen, Em? Fair, fair question. There's going to be a reflection on our top three episodes. Semen Stencil is currently leading, but that could change. We're also going to have an amazing guest. Oh, you're going to love that. I'm going to be writing some fan fiction. I'm bringing my dad along for some singing. It's just a great night out and you'll be home in bed by 10. What more could you ask? All the information you need is at our Instagram at Installation Podcast. Don't forget to check the Instagram where all our videos go each week. It's a great companion to the episode. If you are not following us on Instagram, you are only getting half the story. Have a wonderful weekend or week ahead, depending on when you're listening. Don't forget to check out our episode that's going out Friday around the voice referendum. And we'll chat soon. Bye. Like what you heard and want more? 
Emsolation is a totally independent neurodivergent female-led podcast, which you can help support by subscribing to Emsolation Extra. Get exclusive bonus episodes every Tuesday. Question time with Em and Michael, pre-show meetings, videos of the podcast recording, pre-sale access to live events and discount merch, a weekly newsletter and so much more. Help us by subscribing now or gift a subscription to someone you love at msolation.supercast.com or get the link via Emsolation Socials. Emsolation with M. Rossiano is recorded at Down the Hill Studios. Hosted by M. Rossiano with Michael Lucas. Executive produced by Benjamin Wosley. Produced by M. Rossiano. Edited by Ezekiel Fenn. Socials by M. Rossiano, Benjamin Wosley and Marcella Rossiano. Barrow, with assistance from Jem Evans and Georgia Watts, with videos by James Henderson. Follow us on Instagram at Emsolation Podcast and join other Emsolators at the Emsolation Group on Facebook. The answer is Harry Styles. Please take the time to share this podcast with a friend. Give us a five star rating and make sure you're following us on whatever podcast app you use by hitting the follow button. Thanks for listening, and we can't wait to chat with you again soon. Thank you.